start welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about transport of gases now what are the two important gases which are going to discuss right now the two important gases which will be discussing are oxygen transport and carbon dioxide transport now oxygen is mainly transported in which form see 97 percent of oxygen is transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin so oxygen is bound to hemoglobin this is called as oxyhemoglobin and most of the oxygen in your blood is bound to this hemoglobin in your rpc this form is called as oxyhemoglobin so oxygen is transported majorly in the form of oxyhemoglobin to the tissues now a very little amount of oxygen is dissolved okay dissolved in plasma how much 3% so 3% of oxygen is traveling in the blood in the form of dissolved state okay in dissolved state oxygen is traveling in the blood very little 3% but important point is see this is dissolved oxygen okay this is dissolved oxygen is the one responsible for partial pressure partial pressure of oxygen in blood now if i am talking about pao2 at the level of tissues pao2 in deoxygenated blood see the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood it's not because of the oxyhemoglobin it's because of the dissolved oxygen in the plasma so this question is very very important this point is a very very important point okay the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood is because of the dissolved oxygen not because of the oxygen which is bound to hemoglobin now after seeing this let's talk a few important points about carbon dioxide now carbon dioxide is transported in the form of by carbonates okay by carbonate that is hco3 minus ions so the carbon dioxide whatever is produced at the level of tissues that carbon dioxide will be converted into bicarbonates and that bicarbonates are traveling in the plasma carbon dioxide major route of transport is bicarbonates how much percent almost 70 percent and 30 percent of carbon dioxide is transported by binding to hemoglobin so that is called as carboxy hemoglobin so some amount of carbon dioxide that is 30 percent of carbon dioxide is traveling in the form of carboxyhemoglobin but 70% of the carbon dioxide which is produced at the level of tissues is transported in the form of bicarbonates so based on this you just tell me what is the major root of what, what what is the major form of carbon dioxide transport the major form of carbon dioxide transport is in the form of bicarbonates okay very important mcq so before discussing in detail about the transport of gases here i want you to know some basics okay normally 1 gram of hemoglobin 1 gram of hemoglobin in your rbc it will carry how much amount of oxygen it's having a capability to carry 1.34 ml of oxygen 1 gram of hemoglobin can carry 1.34 ml of oxygen now in healthy person How much hemoglobin is there in 100 ml of blood? In 100 ml of blood, there is 1 deciliter. In 100 ml of blood, there is 15 grams of hemoglobin is there. So, 15 grams of hemoglobin is present in 100 ml of blood. 1 gram of hemoglobin can carry 1.34 ml of oxygen. So, 15 grams into 1.34 ml. Okay. So, it will give you 20 ml. So, from this we can say there is 20 ml of oxygen per 100 ml of blood or there is 20 ml oxygen present in 1 deciliter 20 ml per deciliter 100 ml means 1 deciliter okay this is something basics if i take your blood out okay if i take 100 ml of your blood in that 100 ml of that blood 
we all know we will be having HB percent. How much HB percent in a healthy male will be 15? Okay, the HB percent will be 15. What does it mean by 15? If I, if you take my 100 ml of blood, in that 100 ml of blood, there will be 15 grams of hemoglobin. Now, this 15 grams of hemoglobin can carry how much amount of oxygen? It will carry 20 ml of oxygen. Okay, that's, that's the basic thing which you need to know. After this, let us see what is happening at the level of lungs and what is happening at the level of tissues. Okay, how oxygen is going to be transported from the lungs into the blood and how the oxygen will be delivered to the tissues, from the blood to the tissues. Okay, right now, I will be mainly concentrating about oxygen transport first video in this video we will be discussing only about the oxygen transport in the later video we will be discussing about the carbon dioxide transport okay now see here whatever i am showing you this one this is your alveolus we all know in your alveolus what is the partial pressure of oxygen the partial pressure of oxygen in your alveolus is here i have clearly shown 104 mm Hg or in a round figure we can take 100 mm Hg. Partial pressure of oxygen in alveolus is somewhere around 100 mm Hg. And what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolus? I have already taught you it should be taken as negligible 0. Okay. Now, let us start from this point. Okay. This start point where I have kept the star mark. See, here whatever I am showing you it is the total system, total circulatory system. On one side, I have shown you the circulatory system, the blue color, which is indicating the venous blood. Okay, venous blood are the deoxygenated blood. On the other half, I have shown you the red color blood vessels, which are oxygenated blood vessels or arteries, okay, which are carrying the oxygenated blood. Now, see, deoxygenated blood is coming to the lungs or not? Yes, pulmonary veins are carrying the deoxygenated blood. Sorry, not pulmonary veins. Pulmonary arteries are carrying the deoxygenated blood. Though the, in the name it is their arteries, but they are carrying the deoxygenated blood. That's why I have shown you in the blue color. Okay. Now, see, pulmonary arteries are carrying the deoxygenated blood. Now, if I am saying deoxygenated blood, what does we actually mean by? See, here, deoxygenated blood, usually students will think like there is no oxygen in the deoxygenated blood or there is no oxygen in the venous blood. Students usually think like this. But here look at this image where I have shown you this molecule, okay, this molecule. What is this molecule? I have abbreviated with Hb. So, this molecule is nothing but the hemoglobin molecule. Normally, one hemoglobin molecule can carry four molecules of oxygen. That is something normal. So, even in the venous blood, you can clearly see the hemoglobin is carrying four molecules, three molecules of oxygen, okay. See, this is one oxygen molecule second oxygen molecule, third oxygen molecule, okay. So, from this what we can say is even in venous blood, there is oxygen. One molecule of hemoglobin is still carrying three molecules of oxygen, okay. This is something what you need to know. And here you can see this black dots. What are those black dots? Those black dots are representing the carbon dioxide, okay. Here the black dots, whatever I am representing these black dots, those black dots are nothing but the carbon dioxide. Why? Because it is a venous blood, right? So, carbon dioxide is there in the, is bound with the hemoglobin. That is the carboxy hemoglobin. That is what we have discussed. So, guys, now this hemoglobin molecule or the blood is coming to the alveolus. Now, in at the level of alveolus, what is happening? Here, carbon dioxide is there. Okay, in the venous blood, there is carbon dioxide, no doubt. But what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolus? It is zero. So, what happens? This carbon dioxide is immediately going to diffuse into the alveoli. Why? Because in the venous blood there is carbon dioxide. So, what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the venous blood? The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in venous blood is 46 mm Hg. Why it is 46 mm Hg? In the later videos we will discuss. But just for, remember, in the venous blood there is carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the venous blood is 46 mm Hg. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolus is 0. So, carbon dioxide is diffusing from the venous blood into the alveolus, okay. Now, see what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus. So, partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is 104 mmHg 
are somewhere roughly around 100 mm Hg. So, see, in the blood vessels, in the venous blood, the partial pressure of oxygen is less. How much less? See, here in the venous blood, the partial pressure of oxygen, PaO2, here is 40 mm Hg, 40 mm Hg. In the alveolus, it is 100 mm Hg. In the blood vessels, it is 40 mm Hg. So, now you can logically say, so oxygen is going to diffuse from the alveolus into the blood vessels. Why? Because in the alveolus, it is 100. In the blood vessels, it is just 40 mm Hg. So, oxygen is going to diffuse from the alveolus into the blood. Now, when this extra oxygen is coming, now what happens to the fourth position on the hemoglobin molecule? Now, four molecules are going to bind to the hemoglobin. In a venous blood, only three molecules of oxygen is bound to the hemoglobin. Now, even that fourth pocket or the, the fourth position is also going to be occupied with the oxygen molecule. Now, from this, you just tell me. So, what is the saturation of hemoglobin in venous blood? Saturation, how much percent saturated? 25 percent saturated? 50 percent saturated? 75 percent saturated? 100 percent saturated? If four molecules of oxygen are bound, means 100 percent saturated. In venous blood, only three molecules of oxygen is there. So, 75 percent saturation. Please see here, here the hemoglobin molecule is 75 percent saturated. But in arterial blood, as the oxygen diffused into the blood, the fourth pocket is also occupied. Now, here hemoglobin is 100 percent saturated. If I am saying hemoglobin is 100 percent saturated, means hemoglobin is totally filled with the oxygen or the four that active sites are totally occupied with the oxygen. Okay. Now, after seeing this, let us have a summary. Okay. Now, see here, what is the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood? In the arterial blood, now partial pressure of oxygen is increasing. Why? Why? Because new oxygen got diffused. So, it became 100 mm Hg. Okay, 100 mm Hg. Actually, it will be somewhere around 95 to 97 mm Hg. But for the practical reasons, here just take it 100 mm Hg, round figure. Okay. So, partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood is 100 mm Hg. Now, we all know that in 100 ml of blood, there is 15 grams of hemoglobin. Now, this 15 grams of hemoglobin is carrying how much amount of oxygen? It is carrying 20 ml of oxygen and hemoglobin is also 100 percent saturated. So, this is all what is happening in the arterial side. Okay, on the arterial side, this is what is the position. Now, this arterial blood is coming to the tissues. Okay, now the blood is coming to the tissues. At the level of tissues, what is happening? The tissues are continuously using oxygen. So, the partial pressure of oxygen at the level of tissues is high or less? The partial pressure of oxygen will be less, but the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more. Why? Because tissues are continuously taking up all the oxygen. So, the amount of oxygen at the level of tissues is less. These tissues, because of the metabolism, they will produce carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide partial pressure will be more at the level of tissues. Okay. So, at the level of tissues, the partial pressure of oxygen is only 40 mm Hg. Now, in the blood, there is 100 mm Hg with 100 percent hemoglobin saturation. At the level of tissues, only 40 mm Hg. Now, tell me, what will happen? Diffusion will happen or not? Definitely diffusion will happen. So, from the blood to the tissues, oxygen is going to be diffused. So, see, this, this, this fourth oxygen molecule, now what is happening? It is diffusing into the tissues. Now, this tissues will utilize this one molecule of oxygen. So, with every, when all four molecules of oxygen is coming in a normal person, okay, normal person who is not doing any exercise in a normal physiological state. Now, hemoglobin is bringing four molecules of oxygen, but only one molecule got displaced and that one molecule is going to the tissues and that one molecule is enough for the tissues. See, I am saying one molecule, do not think like you know, only one molecule will be going. Okay, from one hemoglobin molecule, that one oxygen molecule will be diffused into the tissues. Okay, now see while coming back, hemoglobin is again 75 percent saturated with one empty site for the oxygen. Now, let us see 
what are happening on the venous side see this hemoglobin is again going back into the venous blood for the oxygenation okay for the purpose of oxygenation it is again going in the venous blood to the lungs now what is the partial pressure of oxygen see tissues use the oxygen tissues have taken the oxygen so what happened to the partial pressure from 100 again it back it comes back to 40 mm hg so if you look 100 ml of venous blood in that 100 ml of venous blood, yes, there is 15 grams of hemoglobin. There is no change in the hemoglobin. Okay, hemoglobin is a protein. There is no change with the amount of hemoglobin. There is 15 grams of hemoglobin and this 15 grams of hemoglobin is 75% saturated. Okay, only 3 molecules is there and this 75% saturated hemoglobin or this 100 ml blood is carrying 15 ml of oxygen. Okay, 15 ml of oxygen. So, how much is going to the tissues? 20 ml of oxygen is going to the tissues. Okay, 20 ml of oxygen is going to the tissues. 100 ml of blood is carrying 20 ml of oxygen to the tissues. Well, the same 100 ml deoxygenated blood when it is coming back. In the deoxygenated blood, the same 100 ml blood is carrying 15 ml oxygen. So, how much is delivered to the tissues? How much oxygen is delivered to the tissues? So, 5 ml. 5 ml of oxygen is delivered to the tissues from 100 ml blood, not from the entire cardiac group. 100 ml blood is delivering 5 ml of oxygen. Okay, and this deoxygenated blood again goes back to the lungs for the purpose of oxygenation. So, this is how uh, oxygen transport will happen. Now, in the next video, we will discuss in detail about the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation association curves where we will be mainly discussing what is the nature of hemoglobin. Will it love to bind with oxygen or will it try to leave the oxygen? So, how hemoglobin performs or how hemoglobin behaves in different different physiological conditions. Okay, that we will discuss in the next video. In the later videos, we will be discussing about the carbon dioxide transport. Okay, hope the video is helpful. See you in the next video.